Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace, mercy, and blessings of Allah be upon you all. I think a couple times before I say this out, out of order. Salam is peace. Um, <clears throat> Rahman. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Rahman is mercy and barakatuh is a blessing. So may peace, the peace, the mercy, and the blessings of Allah be upon you all. My name is Ismail Bilal Salim. I am um, coming to you live from Masjid William Salam on comparative religion. I am a student of comparative religion. I am a speaker for the Black Dawah Network and a Muslim. <clears throat> Everything that I convey of the truth will be from Allah, the source of all truth, anything, any mistakes that I make are my own. Now, <clears throat> continuing uh, with the same um, topic, talking about Isa or Jesus, Isa alayhi salam, it is uh, quite important that we discuss this matter as uh, there are over two billion Christians in the world, about, uh, I think about 18 million Jews in the world, and almost 2 billion Muslims. This is about half of the world who have some understand, understanding of this man Jesus, apart from those who just see him as a, um, just a righteous man or a religious preacher. So with all those people involved, all those people involved, as well as those people who just are curious about the subject, it is important that we discuss Jesus or Isa alayhi salam. <clears throat> now, when uh, writing this, I was thinking about a brother, um, a Christian brother that I, went, that I used to work with. He was a really devout Christian. Uh, and he had a lot of other people that he uh, worked with that really were devout, really good brothers and sisters. And he and I used to talk all the time about religion, you know, about comparative religion. And he said that God had sent him to me to, um, how you doing, mama? To um, give me some guidance to help me. And I told him that may be the case, but also not to rule out that it could be in reverse, that it could be something that I need to convey to him. So he and I used to go uh, back and forth about religion. And I told him that there is no place in the Bible where Jesus says that he is God. Or he claims to be God. Um, and he was quite taken aback by this. He couldn't believe this to be the case. Uh, so throughout the time I was working with him, he would try to find something. And I would say, Lord, this is not the uh, instance that you are looking for. I remember one time where uh, it was, we were talking about it, and after work, he called me. I was on the way to see a movie with my family, and he called me right before I got into the movie theater. He said, ha-ha, I got you. This is one time when Jesus said that he was God, or he was claiming to be God. And uh, just like any other instance, um, I explained to him that that is not a good uh, reference because Jesus is not claiming to be God. I'm going to give you two of these instances now, one of which is the one that he used and another one that people commonly use to say that Jesus expressed divinity, uh, apotheos, that he put apotheosis upon himself or deification upon himself. Uh, the first one was something that I think many Christians are familiar with. Assalamu alaikum, sister. <clears throat> And brother, I do understand the harmfulness of the white male named Jesus, Isa alayhi salam, which I have uh, talked about, I think, uh, several times in the talks that I have been giving. In the same way that there are stages and steps, you know, Islam was taught to Muslims over 23 years, though the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam over 23 years, there are stages and steps. So we have to get from one stage to the next so we can keep uh, building upon them. 
This is why I try to remember to say Isa alayhi salam. But at any rate, uh, one of the instances is the words I am. Jesus is recorded as saying I am. And many Christians, uh, people who believe in the Trinity, say that this is an instance in which Jesus says or is claiming divinity. Now, this is in John 8, 58. Now, before I go any further, it's going to be a lot of uh, verses that I quote um, because this is going to be pretty, I guess, intensive. It's not something that is self-explanatory uh, or self, um, self-evident. So there will be many verses that I am uh, mentioning to you. I have a book about the Trinity. If you all are interested in it, it can uh, kind of give you more insight into what I'm saying. I'm just going to go over the bare, uh, what needs to be said in this talk today. So in John 8, 58, Jesus is recorded as saying, Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. This is the translation. And this is what is used to suggest that Jesus is saying that he is God. Now to those people who are not familiar with what is being uh, expressed here is it's come going back to the story of Moses in Exodus 3. Moses is walking past a burning bush and he hears the voice of God and the voice of God instructs him to free or emancipate the children of Israel. After getting these instructions, Moses says, well, the people are going to want to know who sent me. So what is your name? Who can I say is the is uh, the one who sent me? And God is recorded as saying in the uh, book of Exodus, I am who I am, or I am what I am. Salamu alaikum. Right? And then he's going further, and Moses is still talking to him. He says, tell them I am sent you. Right? So... <clears throat> What is being declared here is that Jesus is using the same I am that God used when he was talking to Moses. When, when God says, tell them I am sent me to uh, the Pharaoh, to the Egyptians, and to the children of Israel. When Jesus is recorded as saying, before Abraham was I am, they are saying that these two are equals. <clears throat> so this is uh, the claim is that Jesus is making the declaration that he is the same as God. Now, if I am, or the word I am is God's name, then every person, every speaking person has committed blasphemy to some degree. Or we are using God's name in vain to some degree. Um, ultimately, all of us have said I am before, right? Not in Hebrew or Aramaic or in Greek, but we have all said that. So if I am is actually the name of God, then we have broken the third commandment routinely a nu numerous number of times. We are calling ourselves God, even if that is unknowing. But to me, that is a ridiculous premise or a ridiculous idea that saying I am equates you with claiming to be God. If someone comes up to me and says, is your name Ismail? And I say, I am. I am not committing blasphemy. Right. Well, I'm not trying to claim equality with God. Now, the Old Testament, the Tanakh, what the Jews see called the Tanakh, Christians see it as the Old Testament, was written in Greek in this book called the Septuagint. The Septuagint is the Old Testament written in Greek. It was written by Jewish people about almost 300 years before Jesus was born. And the New Testament, the book that's talking about Jesus was written in Greek. So the Greek word that is used that's expressing what Jesus said is ego emi. Now, Jesus spoke Aramaic. I want to make sure you understand this, but the Greek, it was translated into Greek. So that word was ego emi. So the exact words that Jesus used is Abraham, if Abraham was ego emi, or I am. Now, there's another instance in which Jesus uses this same ego in me. Someone asked him, a, a Samaritan lady was at the well, and she asked him, was he the Messiah? And he says, ego in me, I am, 
Interestingly enough, no one uses this to say that Jesus is claiming divinity in that instance. It is often tri translated, I am he, but it is literally, I am. The Greek word, again, is ego in me. So was Jesus claiming divinity at that point? Why is he claiming the divinity in one instance and not the other? In the Old Testament, in the Septuagint, the same word ego emi is used for Abraham, for Eliza, for Jacob, and for David, and several other people. This expression ego emi is common in the Septuagint, in the Greek version of the Old Testament. So why aren't these people called blasphemers? Why aren't they claiming divinity? Why aren't people saying that you are using God's name in vain? The blind man that we talked about last week, the blind beggar. Remember I told you that people were asking, uh, was he the same person? They thought he was somebody different. And he says, ego emi. Again, saying, I am. He's expressing, I am the same person that you have been known. Why isn't this man accused of blasphemy? The problem with this whole thing comes from translation. Remember I told you previously, Muslims learn Arabic, use their, say their prayers in Arabic, and they covet the Arabic because these are the literal words that was given, from the, given to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from God. So they are very important. They are much different than the translation. And this is another example of how translations can get us into trouble. So, <clears throat> the Old Testament, as I said, was written in Greek in the Septuagint. The New Testament is written in Greek. And Moses spoke Hebrew, and Jesus spoke Aramaic. Neither one of them spoke Greek, nor did they speak English. But the whole problem revolves around the translation and the mistaking of the translation. As I said, the actual words that is recorded is ego emi, right? And the Greek, but the Greek word that God is supposed to have used in, it, in Exodus is ho on. You see, there's a huge difference between those two words. Ego emi and ho on are two different words. Ho on means the being or the existing one. Remember, ego emi means I am, which all of us use. Everybody says I am. I am somebody. I am Ishmael. I am a man. I am whatever. Every one of us has used that, but not every one of us used this word ho on, which means the being or the existing one. So ego emi, I am, is just the first part of the sentence. When Moses asks God to give him a name, he says ego emi ho on, meaning I am the existing one or I am the being. I am the living is what he is articulating to him. So all Jesus was saying was, before Abraham was, I am. He is not using the same name, the same title that God used. God said, ho on, he said, ego emi. All right? So the problem is the translation, is the English as well. So the Hebrew, I mean, the gospel is not written in the original language that Jesus spoke, and then it's translated incorrectly and given to us in English. So what Jesus said and what God said have two different meanings and they are two different words. Also, this translation or this prophecy that is supposed to be of Jesus declaring divinity, no Greek speaking person has ever even heard of it because it says two different words. It says ego emi and ho on, but they are both translated as I am. So this, this prophecy only works in English. If you were to ask a Greek speaking person to show me the instance in the Bible where God, where Jesus uses the same word that God uses for Moses, he wouldn't be able to find it. He doesn't even know that we are still that we are using it unless he speaks Greek and English. And he came to America and found out that people are saying that this is an instance when Jesus is equating himself with God. So, again, this is the importance of translation. Assalamu alaikum, sister. <clears throat> so, as I said, God in Exodus is using the word ho'on, right? Ho'on means the, be, the being or the existing one. And this 
uh, is also used five other, other times in the book of Revelation. In Revelations 1, in Revelations 4, in Revelations 11, and in, 11, in Revelation 16. And all of these times, it is referring to God Almighty, not to Jesus. So this whole arm, the one that is the existing one, the one that is the being, is God. And Jesus is not equating himself to us. So this is not a good example. And to go further, let's go back to the actual story. Because we mentioned this, I think, last week. When someone, I was telling you all that Jesus probably wasn't 30 years old. I think it was a couple of weeks ago because I was talking about whether he was married or not. So this is the actual story of what happened. In John 8, it says, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it. And was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, Are you, You're not even 50 years old. How have you seen Abraham? How are you 50 years? You're not even 50 years old. If somebody was 30, they would say, You're not even 40 years old. But as it goes further, Jesus says unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. Then they picked up stones to cast at him, but Jesus hid himself. And went into the temple and got through their midst, and so he passed them. Right? So Jesus is speaking about Abraham, and he is saying that Abraham rejoiced to see Jesus' day. And it says he saw it, and he was glad. This is past tense. Abraham rejoiced, and Abraham was glad when he saw Jesus' day. What Jesus is saying is that God told Abraham about Jesus' coming, and God showed him the events that he had spoken of. And Abraham saw it and was rejoiced. Nothing about I am the same I am as Moses, as God speaking to Moses. Nothing at all about that. This is something that is contrived, something that is not connected. And the Jews, knowing that Jesus had never seen uh, Abraham asked, how did you, did you see him? And he says, before Abraham was, I am. <clears throat> it can also be translated, before Abraham was, I was. He means before Abraham was on earth, he existed. Jesus existed. It is obvious that Jesus is speaking of, not of his identity, like God did with Moses, but he's speaking of a prophecy about himself. God told Abraham, alayhi salam, about Jesus, alayhi salam, and how he would be the last prophet for the, for the children of Israel. Just as God told Jesus, or Isa, alayhi salam, about the coming of Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa Moses, Muhammad, Jesus, all of them existed, just as we all existed before Abraham, during the age of Abraham. All, all, of, all of us existed in the knowledge of God. God knew about all of us before he even created this universe. So God could have told Adam, alayhi salam, about you long before you were born. Jeremiah 1.5 says, God, this is God talking to Jeremiah. He says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. This is what God is saying. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you came forth out of the womb, I sanctified you and ordained you a prophet unto the nations. God knew him. He uh, sanctified him and ordained him as a prophet before he was even born. This is how Jesus or Isa alayhi salam was able to be talking about Abraham and Abraham seeing what would happen because God told him so. Not because he is God. So once again, this is, an inst this is not an instance in which Jesus is declaring that he is God. Not at all in any form or fashion. Reading it literally or figuratively. Another instance would be when Jesus is recorded as saying the Father and I are one. Oftentimes, Christians say especially those who believe in the Trinity, say that this is an instance in which Jesus is declaring his own divinity, saying that he is equal with God. So if we just look at it at face value on what he is saying, for the Father and I are one, the question might be, one what? 
what are we one of? What are they one of? He and I are one. Is it he and I are one God or what is he referring to? Again, we cannot base our salvation, our theology on something that is ambiguous, something that is um, not explicitly stated. God explicitly states in the Bible, I am God. I am the only God. I'm the one and only. In the Quran, it says, I am the one and only explicitly. So we can't use people's interpretation, people's understanding of a verse to me to be something that we hold as concrete. So let us look at the context, what Jesus was referring to. Was he saying me and the father are one God? Let us have a look at it. This is in John 10. It starts at John 10, 24. And John is the one who says the Jews, not me. So I'm reading what is being said out of the, uh, out of the Gospels. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, how long do we have you want to keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. If you, the, if you are the Christ, just tell us, you know. And Jesus answered them and said, I told you, but you did not believe me. The works that I do in my father's name testify to me. But you do not believe because you are not amongst my sheep. My sheep hear my voice and they know me and they follow me. I give them everlasting life or eternal life and they will never perish. No one can take them from my hands. My father gave them to me. He is greater than all. And no one can take them out of my father's hands. My father and I are one. Does that sound like he's saying I am the father? We are one being. We are God. The Jews came to him. This is what he records here. The Jewish people came to him and accusing him of speaking ambiguously, of not being clear enough. Listen, tell us, man, are you the Christ? Are you the Messiah or not? And Jesus says, y'all got it wrong to start with. He immediately says, you got it wrong. I did speak uh, explicitly. I'm not being ambiguous. I am not being um, coy with you. I've told everyone that I'm the Christ. Right. But you don't hear me. You don't believe me because you're not of my sheep. And he says he will keep his sheep in his hands. In other words, he will keep his following together. And his following comes from who? The father who gave him to him. He said the father is greater than all. You know what all includes? It includes Jesus. So he says we are one in that we keep the flock together. Not that we are one in nature, that, not that both of us are omnipotent, not that both of us are uh, all-knowing and all-wise, but we are one in keeping the flock together. In purpose is what he is saying. We are one in purpose, not in nature. So this instance is also not an instance in which we can say that Jesus is declaring divinity. If there are two different people on, any, on each side of the earth and both of them are trying to propagate their faith, let, faith, let's say they are both Christian and both of them are striving to get the world to be Christian. Both of them can be described as one, even though they are two individuals. They are two different people. They are one in purpose. And from there, what happens? In the same way that happened previously, they picked up stones to stone them and he had to hide and run away. The Jews again picked up rocks to stone him. And Jesus answered and said to them, of all the good works that I do from my father, which one do you try to stone me for? He said, and they said, we're not trying to stone you for your good works. We're trying to stone you for blasphemy, for making yourself equal to God. Now we just read that he wasn't saying he was equal to God. So the enemies of Jesus, the people who got it wrong, the people who did not follow him, Christians are saying they got it right. They are in agreement with the Jews that was just about to stone him, saying, yeah, yeah, they, uh, we understand. He was trying to say that he was equal to God, despite the fact that he was not trying to say that. But let us go further. And Jesus says, he answers them and says, isn't it written in your law? 
it says, ye are gods. Listen to me. That he says in your law is very, very, very significant. He continues to say this is in your law in the same way that I am using the Bible. And I say this is in your book. That's what Jesus is saying to them. Isn't it written in your law, ye are gods? Further to say, I am only saying that I am the son of God. And we talked about the son of God, meaning a righteous person, not the literal son of God. And then it says, I do perform my father's works, and do, but you do not believe me. But if I perform them, even if you do not believe me, believe the works, so that you may realize that the father is in me and I am in the father. And then it goes on to say, and they tried again to arrest him, but he escaped their hand. All right. <clears throat> it just keeps freezing up. All right. I'm just going to continue with it. Hopefully it continues the way it does. Sometimes there's some kind of block in this building. I don't know what's going on. And I don't know the uh, mass just internet access. So I'm going to keep going. Excuse me. So Jesus says, listen, you're trying to stone me. But all I did was God's work. And then they try to arrest him and he escapes their hand. So in the same way, in the, in the other story about Abraham, they tried to arrest him. They tried to stone him and he got away. Now, this is what I, one thing that I want to express to you, because after I finish with the divinity of Jesus, I'm going to go on to whether Jesus was crucified or not. There have been multiple instances where Jews, the Jewish people were trying to kill him. Obviously, his followers were Jewish people, but they converted and wanted to follow him. But the other Jewish people that didn't were trying to kill him. More than one occasion, they tried to kill him and, they got, and he got away from it. That's very important. But anyway, so just like in the last case, they tried to stone him and he got away from his accusers and he said they were wrong in what they were accusing him of. Now, also bear in mind that Jesus says in Matthew 23, 37, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you have killed the prophets and stoned them who came, who were sent to you. So there has been a tradition. There have been a number of prophets that came to them. And they tried to kill them and they tried to stone them. Right? So, Salamu Alaikum. So, he says in Matthew 23, I'm going to repeat that. Jesus says, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you have killed prophets and stoned those who were sent to you. So, just that they were trying to stone him and trying to kill him doesn't mean that he was blaspheming. What he is saying is, you've tried to kill prophets before and you have killed other prophets before. For blasphemy, when they were not blaspheming, you killed them unjustly, is what he is saying. And in the parable of the bad tenant, Jesus is talking about a parable in which the messenger keeps coming and they kill him or stone him or run him out. So the children of Israel on multiple occasions have killed different prophets who were legitimate prophets. And if we not, let us not forget during the trial of Jesus, they accuse him of blasphemy, but they couldn't find any witness witnesses nor could they find any evidence so how are christians able to find evidence when the people who were trying to get them crucified couldn't find any evidence so you know what they did they changed the charge from blasphemy to sedition because they couldn't get any witnesses they couldn't get any evidence to say that he had blasphemed because he did not in both of these instances he did not blaspheme at all so at any rate the jews accused him of blasphemy and tried to stone him and jesus is saying to them <clears throat> after he says my, uh, the father and I are one saying they are one in purpose and then they accuse him of being ambiguous then um, if he's being ambiguous right and then he says I am not being ambiguous at all I'm being clear to you that I am the Christ now this is the point that should ring true to people who believe that he is God first of all God shouldn't be, a, be scared to say that he is God they're asking him plainly are you saying that you're God what would God say God is obligated to tell the truth. He should say, yes, I am God. You understood me correctly. But he did not say that. He said, you, you look at your own book. Your own Bible says ye are gods about some other people. So how can you say what I'm saying is blasphemy? And then he runs away. So if he was going to run away and escape, he might as well have told him the truth. He should have said, listen, I'm God and I'm gone. Boom. But he did not. He never said that. He said what they were understanding about him was wrong. And to add further to that, Jesus 
and the Father and the disciple and all believers are one according to the Bible. Jesus is recorded as saying, my prayers is not for them only, meaning the disciples, but I also pray for those who believe in me through their message that all of us may be one. Father, just as you in me and I am in you, the same way that Jesus is talking about being one with the disciples and all of the believers are one with him and the Father. He goes on to say that the world may know that you sent me. I have given them glory that you gave me that there may be they may be one as we, meaning the father and Jesus are one. I and them and they and me so that they may be brought to complete unity. This is what Jesus is recorded as saying in the Bible that man is one that the Father is one, Jesus is one, the disciples are one, and all of the followers are one, meaning they are one in purpose, not one in nature. And Jesus says in another place, if you receive the disciples, you receive me, and if you receive me, you receive God. Is he saying that all three are one? Clearly he is not. But he is saying that they are all one in purpose. In Mark 9, 37, it says, if you receive me, you're not really receiving me, is what he said. You are receiving the one who sent me. And Jesus are only tools of God using, used to bring people closer to God. So Christians that I have once argued with or debated with, or those who didn't want to or wish to argue with me or debate with me, would always have some resolve, always have some contentment with these following words. In, in Philippians 2.10, it says, okay, when it comes back up, it's probably going to be uh, stitched together, some, some, so some things are going to be edited out. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this stuff outside. Because whatever is happening in the mass jet is causing some issues. Take me a chair and go outside and do this. Y'all roll with me. <clears throat> Taking a stroll through the mask jig, kids. <laughs> I'm just going to go out, out here because I don't know what's going on with the signal in here. It's causing some issues. Excuse me. So I don't know where this thing cut off at, so I'm going to try to uh, do this again. I'm just going to finish where I was previously. Give me a second. Long one off, sorry about that. All right, so um, let me repeat what I was saying previously is that, so we started off talking about the Father and I are one. And I was telling you that Jesus is saying they are one in purpose, not in nature, not um, the same being, but they are one in purpose in that they will keep the followers together, right? And then Jesus says that the disciples and the followers of Jesus will all be one. The same way that he is one with the Father. The same way. 
he will be the same way that he is in the father and the father is him the disciples and all the believers will be one in them so if we are to suggest that Jesus is God because of what he said, then we must also say that all the disciples and all of the followers of Jesus, the, one, the two billion people that are living on earth and all of the billions of people who lived before this are also involved in the Godhead. So there are far more than three gods, but billions of them, if Christianity is believed to be true. At any rate, what I was ending with is that oftentimes... Christians have a, when having a discussion with me, or those who don't want to have a discussion with me, they say, they say these words for me. They come from, Philipp from Philippians 2.10. And they read, In that, at the name of Jesus, every name should bow of those in heaven and those on earth and those under the earth, and that every tongue confess that Jesus is the Lord, to glorify the glorify God the Father. Now I don't have much issue with that because if Jesus is the Lord not as the rub but as the authority like we mentioned last week as he the authority on earth he is he was he was a prophet of God so I don't have any problem with seeing him as an authority and to glorify God. But this is not just a warning to me it's a warning to other people as well. Now, Paul wrote Philippians, but he also wrote Romans, which has a verse quite similar to this. In Romans 14, 11, it says, For it is written, As I live, said the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. I also don't have any problem with that. I will bow and confess to God. Right? But something is different about this one. First is no mention of Jesus as the Lord. Jesus Christ is the Lord. But it also says, for it is written. Which means it was written somewhere else. And then Paul took it from that place and put it in the book of Romans. Now, if you do any research, you find out where it was written. It was a prophecy. Meaning that this is going to happen in the future. It comes from mm -hmm. Isaiah 45, 23. Which reads, and this is God talking. Before me, every knee will bow. By me, every tongue will swear. I guess it's close to every tongue will confess. This is God talking about the day of judgment. And he says, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall swear to me. But guess who he's talking to? He is talking to a Christ, to the Christ. Remember, this is in the Old Testament. This is Isaiah. He's one of the great prophets of the Old Testament, the Tanakh. In Isaiah 45, 1, we find out who God is talking to. God is talking to the Christ of God named Cyrus. Not Jesus Christ. Cyrus. The crazy part about this is Cyrus is a Persian pagan. So this is to my Jewish brothers. How can a pagan be the Messiah? They have waited over 2,000 years for the Messiah to come. We say it is Jesus. There was a Messiah that already came who was a pagan named Cyrus. Now I'm asking them, is there two different Messiahs? One of them that's a pagan and one of them is a monotheist? One of them that believes in multiple gods and another one that believes in the God? And to my Christian friends, how did Paul get this wrong? He quoted it twice in Philippians and in Romans. He is professing that Jesus is the Christ, but the prophecy was to Cyrus the Christ. Believe me, this is, this is not the first instance in which this occurs. A prophecy, when you go back and follow it up, you find out all kinds of amazing things. Several prophecies that are meant to be for Jesus are for people who were polytheists, people who believed in multiple gods. There's a prophecy about a man riding, uh, riding an animal, and they describe the animal in two different ways, and Matthew thinks it's two different animals. He thinks one man rode on two different animals. What I'm saying is this book that they have, just like Jesus was saying, in your book, in your scripture, he is not declaring it his scripture. 
In the same way I'm saying in your book, in the Bible, there are instances of things that are not true. How y'all doing? So the Bible records in Matthew 7, 21. This talks about the day of judgment again, because what I told you previously about every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess, is about the day of judgment. It's about the last day, and God is saying every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Now the Bible records that Jesus will be saying some things on the day of judgment as well. He will be saying this in Matthew 7, 21, it says, Not everyone who shall say to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of the Father in heaven. Who does the will of the Father? I told you all last week, the will, doing the will of God is a Muslim. Submission to the will of God is al-Islam. So not everyone who's going to enter the kingdom saying, Lord, Lord, but only those who submit to the will of God. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have I not prophesied in your name and cast out demons in your name and done many mighty work, works in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, those who practice lawlessness, those who don't have a law. Get out my face. I don't know who you are. This is what the Bible says he's going to say to people who are saying that they are following Jesus. Now, the Quran also says that Jesus will be talking on the day of judgment. And this is what he will say. Audhu billahi minash shaitan rajim bismillahir rahmanir rahim Wa id qala Allahu ya Isa ibn Maryam a'atka a'anta qulta innasi taqituni wa umiya ilahan من دون الله قال سبحانك ما يكون لي أن أقول ما أس ما لس ليس لي بحق إن كنتم قلتوه فقد علمت تعلمون ما في نسي ولا أعلم ما في أنسك Mafi na nafsika innaka at anta alaymul guyub. He will say on the day of judgment, Allah will say to him, O oh Jesus, son of Mary, did you ever ask the people to worship you and your mother as gods aside from Allah? Jesus will answer, Glory be to you. How can I ever say something that I had no right to say? If I had said such a thing, you would certainly have known it. You know what is inside of me, but I don't know what's within you. Indeed, you are the knower of all the unseen. And further, Maqultu lahum illa ma'an amartani bihi anib I have never told them anything except what you ordered me to say. That is, worship Allah, my Lord and your Lord. I was witness over them as long as I have remained among them. But when you took me, you were the witness over them and you are a witness over all things. So both the Quran and the Bible show condemnation for some of the people who profess, Salamu Alaikum, who profess to be followers of Jesus. Let me repeat to you again what Jesus is recorded, is supposed to say on the day of judgment about people who worship him. 
Allah will ask him, O oh Jesus, son of Mary, did you ever ask the people to worship you or your mother as gods besides Allah? And he will say, glory to you. You remember when the man asked him, are you good? You know, he said, no, he says, good master. How do I get to heaven? And he says, hold up, hold up, hold up. Don't call me good. So before Allah answers, before Jesus answers Allah, he says, glory be to you. How can I ever say something I have no right to say? And if I had said, you would have known it. He said, I never told them anything like this. I only told them to worship Allah, who is my Lord and your Lord. Let us be cautious. Let us be... How you doing, brother? Let us be cautious in declaring anyone God except God. Anyone God except God. Anything. As I said, there are more people who worship the creation on this earth right now than who worship the creator alone. Whether they say God is a man or a monkey or a cow or a statue, there are more people on this earth today who worship the creation than those who worship the creator alone. This, in this, we have gone astray. Let us come back. Assalamu alaikum. Peace.